everyone it's Ross and we are looking at my tomatoes because we are soon to be in tomato heaven we have all kinds of hybrids in here but mostly we have heirlooms you can see this is the green zebra I've even gotten to eat one of these guys off of this vine we have all kinds of different things I think that back here is mortgage lifter if I'm not mistaken you can see those are ripening up and getting the right color fairly soon. And these tomato plants are just covered in tomatoes from head to toe. Even the smaller tomato plants I had started from seed are getting covered from head to toe. And we're now in July, and that's this is going to be my life, uh, just filled with tomatoes. It's a good life, right guys? But I think a lot of this can be attributed to a few things. One, we're growing them vertically. And two, we are, by growing them vertically, we're actually uh, more productive in this small space. But we're also, you know, really um, keeping these guys disease free. And here's how it's done, right? So we grow them as single stem plants. In order to grow them as a single stem plant, there's a little bit more work that's involved, but you need a stake, obviously. I like to use these EMT posts if I can. Um, they're very sturdy, they're 10 foot tall. You can get them at Home Depot for pretty cheap. Or you can get your standard bamboo. You can also get bamboo quite cheap. Or if you have a, a cousin like I do, who has a massive bamboo planting in his backyard that is taking over everything, you can come in his backyard and chop some of it down with a machete. That's always fun. And then let that stuff dry and you can use it as a steak. Um, so that's one thing you need is a steak, but you also need to know how to prune these guys. So the tomato plant naturally likes to form as a bush. It doesn't like to grow straight up in the air like a tree. It likes to support itself and grow as a bush. And what you see here is the tomato plant grown as a single stem. But we had to get rid of a lot of suckers to get to this point, to maintain this form. So you can see right in here, if I get closer for you guys, this is the main stem here, and here is a leaf stem that comes out. Right in between that is a sucker that's forming right now. In fact, the same thing is happening. This is the main stem right here. You can see that goes all the way up to here. I need to tie this to the pole. But then we also have behind it is we have the main stem, the leaf stem, and another sucker. So if we wanted to maintain this form here, we need to take this off. And you can pull it off, break it off with your thumb, get some pruning shears, some scissors, whatever you want to do. But that's what we need to do to maintain these plants as single stem plants. And that way you're going to be way more productive because if I were to grow, let's say there's nine tomato plants in this three by three space. There should be, but there's one missing. All right. That's my fault, but <laughs> there should be nine of them. And let's say we had nine plants producing, I don't know, tons of tomatoes. Now, if I had grown a tomato the regular way, if I had grown one plant, that one plant would take up this entire area and not give me nearly as many fruits. So by doing it like this, by pruning them as single stem plants, we're getting more fruit for the space. Now, you don't have to do this. If you have a lot of land, maybe you don't need to do this. But I think there's another positive to this which is that if you're not growing hybrid, uh, hybrid tomatoes like my sun peach here, this is a sun peach hybrid related to sun gold. You know, these are bred tomatoes that are specifically bred for production and color and disease resistance. Whereas my heirlooms like green zebra here or Paul Robeson or pink brandywine, you know, those guys are not bred. Those have been tomatoes that have been the seeds have been saved over time and over over time and over time you know 
Sometimes they have good disease resistance, other times they don't. It depends on where they were grown, right? Where were the seeds saved for years and years and years? And what diseases were prevalent in that area? So we, not, we might not necessarily have a tomato that is very disease resistant. We may get blossom end rot. We may have some blight on our tomatoes. And a lot of this, these problems can be solved by pruning them as single stem plants. And if you get down underneath the plants and you look, you look around here, you can see there's very little leaves because I have purposely taken off the lower leaves because most blight or problems with tomatoes is soil borne, right? It comes up from the soil and infects the lower leaves and then it goes up and up and up the plant, right? We're starting to get these lower leaves right here that are starting to look not so great. Or maybe even the one back here. So what I'll do is as soon as this cluster of fruits forms, which it did, the first cluster of fruits, I'll come in here and I'll take this off, take these leaves off, so that we have better airflow, better circulation. We're not getting leaves in contact with moisture and the soil. And these plants are just pruned in a much better way. And because of this, we've just have unbelievably productive prolific tasty tomatoes so I hope everyone enjoyed this little preview into my tomatoes uh, I think we'll do some interesting tasting videos comparison comparing some heirlooms to another maybe comparing some hybrids to another and uh, really getting an idea of what these tomatoes taste like so that you guys can maybe have some good recommendations of what you should grow at home. Alright everyone, I'll talk to you soon. Take care.